Cool. So, I wanted to make another video uh, to talk a little bit more about, like, the process of deciding to get top surgery. Um, I've had a couple friends, like internet friends, or a couple people ask me, like, how I was sure or knew that I wanted top surgery. Um, which is, like, yeah, that's a really hard question, and it's definitely different for everyone. Um, but I thought that maybe it would be helpful to talk about kind of the stuff that, like, the issues or hard things about my decision-making process. Um, let's see if anyone else relates to that. Um, so... God, I looked at stuff about top surgery for, like, years and years. Um, I watched so many YouTube videos, and I watched, or found so many resources on the internet. Um, everything that I was looking at was definitely directed towards trans men. Um, and at the time I was, like, watching a lot of those videos, I didn't necessarily know if I fell into like a trans category or not. I was like really fascinated to learn about transitioning like or starting hormones or things like that and I don't think I was necessarily applying it to my own life. I just was like really obsessed with looking into this info and I don't know why. And it's like Okay, it took me so long to figure out how gay I am, and it took me so long to figure out that I'm not a girl, and so I, like, I know that I'm really slow at figuring those things out, but now looking back at it, I can kind of, like, piece to piece, piece together, like, these things that were like, whoa, like, okay, yeah, like, two years ago, I was looking at videos of top surgery and, like, not really realizing that that was, like, something I wanted for my body. Like, not even realizing that was something I could, like, do. I thought it was, like, something... I thought I couldn't transition. Like, it's cool that, like, someone could do that, but, like, I could never do that because, like, that would be so hard on, like, on me and on my family and, like all these other things. So I think my initial attitude towards like top surgery and stuff was like, I was really interested in it, but it like didn't feel like something that I could do. Um, and then like, I don't know, more thinking about it, being more familiar about it, talking with more trans people and stuff, I think that becomes less of like, this huge alienating like hurdle of like well if I get top surgery then like what am I gonna say to grandma and like how do I have to explain my gender identity to things and it's like that's not even like what it's about and that's like not really even a hard part and like ugh, I don't know um I think the biggest like contributing factor to like finally deciding that I, like, wanted to get top surgery, and it didn't matter if I, like, if I, then people thought I had a weird alien body, or it didn't matter then that pe if people that maybe otherwise wouldn't have known I'm trans would now know I'm trans. Like, my friend, my really, really good friend was talking with me and was like, you just need to think about, like, what you want your body to be. Like, not in terms of, like, be a boy or be a whatever you think you should be. Like, what does your face look like? And what does your voice sound like? And what does your hair look like? And what does your body look like? And so I think then I spent a lot of time, like, realizing, like, and at this point I had been binding for, like, more than six months, maybe more than a year, and, but I had never, like, realized that it was, like, no, the only time that I like my body is when I'm binding, and, like, I, I don't know, putting things into perspective in that way made it so much easier for me to be, like, yeah, no, duh, like, I really want to get top surgery, like, that's something that's really important to me, and it's, like, at that point made so much sense and was, like, 
so important that like all these other things that have been in my back of my head that are like, oh, well, you're not trans enough or like, oh, well, this will be awkward for your parents or like things like that, like don't matter anymore at some point. And I think that like, that's how I knew that I like really needed and wanted top surgery. Um, so I don't know, I guess I like thought about it for years. Um, then I think for like four or five months, I like seriously, once I was seriously on board with like top surgery, like was just doing so much research on the internet and like talking to people and looking up surgeons and like once I got to that point of like comfortable with the, the idea at that point then it was like it just went by so quick it was like really weird like once I finally called a surgeon to like get a consultation it was like oh yeah we can fit you in in two weeks and then once I had my consultation it was like oh yeah we can fit you in in like two months or I think it was like four or more months but but it just like then it was like one thing that after another and it just all worked out magically um I don't know I absolutely was the best decision and I'm so happy that I have did it and um I think that I had a lot of self-doubt through the entire process, like, even after I had made a consultation and was so stoked about it, I think I was, like, a lot of it was just checking in with myself and, like, you know, like, you don't have to go through with something just because now you've made an appointment. So, you know, like, checking in with yourself. But, like, also I think that I experienced a lot of self-doubt that, like, wasn't my own self-generated doubt. It was, like, other people's feelings and things projected on me and it was like I should be questioning this or like I should be doubting this because like other people do and like once I like sifted through that and like realized that I'm like no all of this like second guessing that I'm doing is like not actually me worrying it's like me feeling like I should have to worry or like I don't know it's but but I definitely, like, even the week before top surgery was, like, I think I'm doing the right thing. I think. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And, like, and I think that's okay. Because, like, at the point I'm at now, I am so fucking stoked. And it's just, like, I don't know. Gender, gender identity and identities in general are so tricky and are so fluid and can change so often for so many different reasons whether it's just like social climate whether it's like you know I just think people and bodies and identities change and like that's okay um and I think there's a lot of pressure of like transness and being trans enough or not being trans enough that conflate how we feel about top surgery um there's also a lot of like medical gatekeeping that it's like when I started once I decided I wanted top surgery and I started looking for surgeon I was like surgeons I was like I don't even know if I can find surgeons that will like do this procedure on someone who's like not a man and not on hormones and hasn't changed their voice and like you know like I was really worried that I might not even be able to find someone who could do the procedure because, like, there's, especially in the medical community, there's, like, such gatekeeping and such disconnect between, like, people having their own body autonomy versus, like, you have to fit these guidelines in order to be trans, you know? And so that sucks, and that's, like, a really hard thing to get over, and that's, like, I think something that everyone deals with and that I think that, like, you will always have to deal with is like people policing gender people questioning gender and so like don't let that become your biggest doubt and speaker in your head like make sure that you are being true to yourself and not like other people's projected doubt does that make sense I don't know but 
Yeah, I am very, very super happy that I was able to have top surgery. Um, and I definitely think it's important to acknowledge the fact of, like, the privilege of being able to have top surgery and that, like, luckily I'm someone that is, like, employed full-time and has, like, a fairly supportive support system and family, like, both chosen family and, like, actual family. Um, because, like, that's, it sucks, but that's a lot of what it comes down to is, like, top surgery is fucking expensive. And it's widely, largely not covered by insurance. And so it's like, I'm really happy I was able to have top surgery, but I also feel like I have like privilege guilt because like I was able to afford top surgery and like that's not something that everyone that wants to have top surgery like can afford and that fucking sucks. And now there's things like Kickstarter or like Indiegogo or things like that that are useful tools to like help with the cost of top surgery but like that's not the answer like hopefully sooner rather than later um policies and insurance and shit like that can get their shit together and make this something that is like a, a medical necessity because it, it is um but I don't know I think that it's always okay to check in with yourself and in terms of identity check in with yourself in terms of privilege um I don't know I kind of got off on a tangent with that but it's important, and, um, so I think next time I make a video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the mental and emotional recovery part of, like, getting top surgery, because I definitely didn't prepare for that, and, um, I have definitely struggled a little bit with that during recovery, um, and so... Yeah, I think that's it. Um, see ya.